I've been studying Ephesians 4 to prepare for a big event that's coming in our church's future. I discovered that Paul may have been struggling with some of the same issues that face modern pastors. Today I want to talk about rank in the church. Does the Bible support the importance of some over others? I'm Pastor Mike, and this channel is called Scripture That Makes a Difference because I believe Scripture has made a difference in my life, and it can make a difference in yours as well. So each video in this channel aims to show how each passage makes a difference today. Now, if this is your first time here, you can learn more about the channel in the description below. And if you find you like hearing how specific passages make a difference in our lives today, just click the subscribe button and you'll get more. And stick around. By the end of this video, we're going to discover the cure for church arrogance. In Ephesians 4.11, Paul gives a list of spiritual gifts. Or is it a list of church offices? Or is it a hierarchy for the church? Or is it something else altogether? Let's take a look at Ephesians 4 and see what we can learn. In Ephesians 4.11, Paul says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the shepherds and teachers. And he goes on and says more about that in the next few verses, but what does this list mean? Now, there is some difference of opinion on what these different titles actually meant. Some think when Paul mentioned the apostles, he was talking about the original 12 or the original 11. Or the 14 mentioned throughout the New Testament, uh, even in that there's some difference of opinion. Others believe apostles are those who have some special spiritual gift to understand Scripture and how it applies. And still others believe that this talks about church planters who move from one place to another to plant churches. When he mentions prophets, that seems to be universally understood as someone who speaks for God. Now, what that actually means can have some latitude as well. Is that someone who receives new revelation from God or has special messages for different people from God about them? Or is it someone who can study the word and understand it and then proclaim it in such a way that new people are inspired by it? Evangelists is even easier to understand. That's a person who shares the gospel. That's someone who may make a living giving evangelistic campaigns or may share the gospel across a coffee table with a neighbor so that they get saved. The real question is about the issue of the shepherds and the teachers because the grammar isn't clear. Is he talking about two different groups, two different offices, shepherds who lead people like a shepherd would lead sheep, and then a teacher who would proclaim what the gospel or the Bible says so that people can understand it and apply it to their lives? Or is the office actually a shepherd teacher? A person, one person, who does both the gathering and leading and feeding by teaching and proclaiming what is said in the Bible. Many of us wonder why Paul would leave us with such a confusing list. I think the issue can be resolved by looking at the entire chapter, or at least the first 16 verses, and taking it as one passage, one group, or a single thought from Paul. I think he's making a different point in which the list of offices or gifts or rank are totally irrelevant to him. He starts the chapter by asking the people of Ephesus to walk in unity. You can go back to verses 2 and 3 to see that. And then in verse 13, after this passage, he says that the goal of these offices or gifts or whatever are to obtain that unity. And it isn't until verse 15 when he gives us the action point where he says that we are to speak the truth in love. Paul was motivating everyone to focus on growing up in Christ to be what Christ called us to be. And we all have a part to play in each other's growth. With Christ as the head, we all play a role in the church becoming all that he wants it to be. And any scripture that helps us help others in the church is a scripture that makes a difference. So what's your reaction to this? Is there anything new in what you've heard today? Any questions that arise out of it? 
I would love to hear your comments and reactions to what I've said. Perhaps there's something that I could make more clear, and I'd be happy to correspond through the question section below. You can also make suggestions about future content, uh, some passage that you would like to hear, how it applies today. And if you've gained any value from watching this video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you like hearing how specific passages can make a difference today, click the subscribe button and click the bell so you'll be the first to know when I've released new episodes. And don't forget, you have a role in getting out the difference-making scripture to others. You do this by sharing this video in your favorite social media. And if you happen to live anywhere near Enid, Oklahoma, please come by and visit us. Our address is on our Facebook page. I've put a link below. Our services take place at 10 in the morning, and we'd love to meet you sometime. And until our next time together, remember this. You matter to the ministry of the church.